Domain 1 is titled Language Concepts and Language Acquisition and represents 25% of the ESL 154 Supplemental Test. Competency 1 and Competency 2 specifically address language concepts and processes required for both first and second language acquisition. By understanding the language development process, the ESL teacher can better support each English learner's progress towards English proficiency. Competency 1. The ESL teacher understands fundamental language concepts and knows the structure and conventions of the English language. Notice that 1.A states that the ESL teacher must understand the nature of language and basic concepts of language systems, such as phonology, morphology, syntax, lexicon, semantics, discourse, and pragmatics, and use this understanding to facilitate student learning in the ESL classroom. Basic language systems. Understanding the nature of language, language systems, language functions, and registers is critical to the development of academic language. As educators, we must use all resources and information available to plan more effectively and incorporate all four language domains, listening, reading, speaking, and writing. In language development, Listening and reading are considered receptive language, meaning the capacity to understand information. Receptive language includes understanding spoken and written words, phrases and sentences, as well as inferring meaning from what is said aloud or read. Typically, children develop receptive language first before they develop expressive language. Language concepts. Let's walk through the fundamental language concepts that make up the structures and conventions of the English language. Teachers of English learners should be familiar with the following concepts. Phonology, phoneme, phonetics, phonics, or phonemic awareness, semantics, morphology, morphemes, cognates, lexicon, and discourse, syntax, pragmatics, dialect you'll see that they've been organized to help you understand relationships between concepts. Phonology is the study of speech sounds, also known as phonemes, how they change, and the actual pronunciation of words or phonetics in a particular language. Notice in this group of words, the prefix phon is at the beginning of each word. You can remember that words with this prefix have to do with the sound that letters produce by thinking of a phone. Phonics involves the relationship between sounds and written symbols, whereas phonemic awareness is the ability to identify and manipulate individual sounds in spoken words. So a phoneme is a single unit of sound in speech. Two major phoneme categories include vowels and consonants. Vowels are speech sounds produced by open, unobstructed vocalization, with the vibration of the vocal cords, but without audible friction. Consonants are speech sounds in which the breath is at least partially obstructed. A grapheme is the written symbol that represents a unit of sound. In this example, the phoneme is the sound of the letter C, so while the grapheme is the visual symbol for the letter C itself. Although there are only 26 letters in the English language, consider how letter combinations can create a phoneme. As in ch, sh, and th. And a single letter can represent different phonemes, like the way the letter A represents a in cat and a as in swan. Because of this, there are actually 44 phonemes, 20 vowel sounds, and 24 consonant sounds. There are even more graphemes in English, approximately 250 in fact, 
as groups of letters are often combined to make a single sound. A phonemes chart is provided in the appendix to the accompanying manual for this course and is linked in the resources. While it is not necessary to memorize every phoneme, much less every grapheme, it is important to be familiar with these terms as fundamental language concepts. Phonetics involves the physical production of speech sounds. The science of phonetics aims to identify and describe the individual phonemes in a language and how those sounds are produced. You heard this a moment ago when I was pronouncing the sound for the letter C. The place of articulation refers to the placement of the tongue and the positioning of the lips and mouth when producing a sound. This is how we modify airflow in our vocal tract to produce speech sound. The manner of articulation refers to how speech organs, such as the tongue, lips, and palate, are moved when making a speech sound. Voicing in phonetics refers to sounds produced through the vibration of the vocal cords. Consonants can be either voiced or unvoiced and categorized by place and manner of articulation. All vowels are voiced. Vowels can be further described by the positioning of the tongue and lips. Consider the word catch. It involves the actual pronunciation of three phonemes. K, A, CH. Which sounds were voiced? If you said the A ah sound, that's right. The A ah sound was voiced because all vowels are. K and CH are unvoiced consonant sounds because they did not involve any vocal cord vibration to produce. Examples of voice consonants is the B sound, B, M, M, and R, R, where we must vibrate our vocal cords to produce them. More details, including a labeled visual on the place and manner of articulation, are available in the appendix to the accompanying manual for this course, linked in the resources. Student application. ESL teachers must be aware of their own pronunciation as they help English learners in their ability to pronounce words in English. I will elaborate further when we touch on dialect in the discourse section of this video. Phonics is the study and use of sound spelling correspondences as a method for teaching reading and writing. Phonics instruction develops the learner's phonemic awareness or that ability to hear, identify, and manipulate phonemes in order to teach the correspondence between these sounds. This includes learning the spelling patterns to represent the words. Student application. Direct instruction of phonemes that do not exist in the student's primary language, or L1, may be necessary. Although phonics is part of literacy development for younger learners, Older English learners may have gaps that can be addressed through targeted phonics instruction. Activities that develop phonemic awareness, as described in Domain 2, Component 5.C, can also positively impact and accelerate literacy development. The alphabetic principle is simply the systematic and predictable relationships between written letters and spoken sounds in a language such as English. It is important to note that not all languages are alphabetic in principle. This is further explained in Domain 2, Component 5.C. How can we apply this to help students? Well, phonetic similarities and differences between a student's primary language, L1, and English, L2, can serve as background knowledge for new understanding in L2 based on the alphabetic principle or relationship between phonemes and graphemes. Semantics. Semantics refers to the study of linguistic meaning, including synonyms, antonyms, and homonyms. Synonyms are words that are similar in meaning, as little and miniature are synonyms. Antonyms are words that are opposite in meaning, 
just as little as the opposite of big. Homonyms are words with the same spelling or pronunciation, but different meanings and origins. As in bat, like the animal, and the bat used in baseball. Semantics can be applied to entire text or to single words, as in final destination and last stop are technically synonymous, but semantically different. The student application is that as English learners' fluency improves, semantics can help deepen their understanding of words and how to use them. Morphology is the study of words, how they are formed and their relationship to other words in the same language. A morpheme is each unit of meaningful language that comprises a word and cannot be further divided without losing meaning. This includes stems, root, base words, prefixes, and suffixes. A morpheme can be one syllable, like dog, or more than one syllable, like hyena. The whole word can be a single morpheme, as in play, but there can be more than one morpheme in a single word, such as in playfulness, which has three morphemes. There are two types of morphemes, free or independent morphemes, such as do, play, or jump, and bound, as in dependent morphemes, which include prefixes and suffixes, such as un, words ending in S to signify plurality, and ED endings to signify past tense. For example, the word plays has two morphemes. Play is an independent morpheme, while the S ending is dependent. What's the student application? The study of morphemes. What's the student application? The study of morphemes gives students generalizations they can apply and identifiable patterns. Cognates. Cognates are words from different languages that are spelled the same, known as true cognates, or almost the same, known as partial cognates. These words are pronounced similarly or the same and share similar or same meaning an example of a true cognate is the word animal, which is spelled the same and pronounced similarly in both English and Spanish, animal. An example of a partial cognate is the word college in English. In Spanish, the word is colegio. Notice the beginning of the word is the same, but the ending is different and the meaning is the same. False cognates are words from different languages that are spelled the same or nearly the same, but have different meanings. An example of a false cognate is the word éxito in Spanish, which means success, whereas exit in English would actually translate as salida in Spanish. The student application is that many Prefixes and suffixes are similar in various languages, and just as with cognates discussed below, teachers can accelerate language acquisition by drawing these connections. Lexicon can refer to the personal knowledge that a speaker has about the form and meaning of words and phrases within a language or the complete written lexicon of a language itself. English learners are developing their own lexicon as they acquire English vocabulary. Lexical ambiguity is a situation in which a word has two or more meanings. An example of lexical ambiguity would be the statement, today we will learn about tables. The word tables can cause ambiguity because it has more than one meaning. Note that in lexical ambiguity, it is an individual word's meaning that causes confusion. 
what could be the student application? Teachers can anticipate when they notice lexical ambiguity in reading for any given content area. Students may need guidance in questioning the text and gaining clarity. This course is a broad term used to refer to both spoken and written language. Since language is used in many different social contexts, this course can vary based on audience and purpose of speech or writing. In discourse construction, phonemes are combined to form morphemes, morphemes into words, words into phrases, phrases into sentences, sentences into discourse. Culture-bound patterns of discourse will be described in a subsequent section of Competency 1. The student application is that knowledge of discourse, how it is constructed from all the other language concepts, and how discourse patterns can vary between cultures, as explained in Competency 9, can help teachers better anticipate the instructional needs of English learners. Syntax. Syntax refers to the rules that govern the way in which words combine to form phrases, clauses, and sentences. A phrase is a related group of words without both a subject and a verb. An example is the phrase, the boy on the bus. A clause is a group of words that does have both a subject and a verb, can be either dependent, meaning it does not express a complete thought, or independent, meaning it can be a complete thought on its own. An example of a dependent clause is, although the boy appeared to read. An independent clause would be, the boy on the bus appeared to be reading. A sentence is a group of words with both a subject and a verb that express a complete thought. Sentences can be complex, meaning it has one independent clause and at least one dependent clause, compound, meaning it has more than one subject or predicate, or compound complex, a combination of these. A complex sentence example would be, although the boy on the bus appeared to be reading, he was thinking about his upcoming soccer game. A compound sentence example is, he was thinking of his upcoming soccer game and he was feeling anxious. A compound complex sentence example is, Although the boy on the bus appeared to be reading, he was thinking about his upcoming soccer game and he was feeling anxious. Student application. Explicit instruction on syntax structures should be embedded into the context of reading and writing. This includes borrowing examples from mentor text or content area literature. Syntactic ambiguity is a situation where a sentence may be interpreted in more than one way due to ambiguous sentence structure. Providing context can often help clarify the meaning of the sentence. Syntactic ambiguity example, the chicken is ready to eat, meaning the chicken is awaiting its food so that it can eat, or the chicken has been cooked and is ready for others to eat it. What is the student application? Teachers should be aware that syntactical errors are a natural part of learning, and English learners will improve their ability to create language with correct syntax and appropriate scaffolds. When a student's writing contains syntactic or lexical ambiguity, teachers have the opportunity to discuss meaning and informally assess language ability. Is the student able to self-correct yet? Pragmatics is the study of how language is used and of the effect of context on language. Examples of pragmatics include the language of a teacher talking to a student or the language used between friends. Student application. Understanding pragmatics of language as it relates to language registers and formal versus informal dialogue discussed at length in this competency can help teachers bridge connections for students between their basic interpersonal communication skills, or BICs, 
and they're developing cognitive academic language proficiency. Dialect. A dialect is a variation on a language's usage that signals what region a person is from, or sometimes in relation to a person's social background or occupation. An example would be the contraction y'all, which may mean the same as the phrase all of you in a different dialect. An accent is how a person sounds when they speak a language. Accents can be regional or due to the speaker's primary language. Examples include speaking English with a Texan accent or an Italian accent. The student application is this, everyone, teachers and students alike have dialects and accents. For instructional clarity, teachers should be aware of the regional and social background dialects that may have an impact on communication in their classrooms. This knowledge relates to formal and informal language registers which will be discussed in the subsequent section of this domain. The focus must always be on helping English learners develop academic language. Understanding the nature of language, language systems, language functions, and registers is critical to the development of academic language. Being aware of language functions and registers helps English learners understand the different purposes for and the appropriate styles of communication for that purpose. Language functions. Language functions can be described in various ways. Here are some essential categories to be familiar with. First, we have frozen or static. These are specific written words or oral acts that never change, hence the name frozen or static. Think of printed or unchanging spoken language. Some examples include quotes, pledges, or traditional songs. A formal language function involves technical language. Courtesy is considered important, and there are many understood rules for how to phrase language. Examples may include academic speeches or presentations, politically correct language, and professional introductions. In a consultative language function, participation is back and forth with background information provided and interruptions allowed. Examples include conversations between teachers and students, doctors and patients. A casual language function involves back and forth between familiar people, conversations with no background information needed, slang and interruptions are common. Examples include friends, talking, and social encounters with new acquaintances. An intimate language function involves private communication. Body language and intonation is often more important than the verbal message. Examples include close relationships or interactions between family members. formal and informal language registers. Next, let's take a look at formal and informal language registers. You'll notice formal language is less personal than informal language. Formal language does not use colloquialisms, contractions, or first person pronouns such as I or we. Informal language is more casual and spontaneous. Formal register, may I have some water? Informal, pass the water over here. Formal, please stop talking. Informal, hush. Formal, how are you, sir? Informal, what's up? Formal, I feel that my performance was not reflective of my culture. Informal, I feel like a total sellout. Formal, would you kindly provide directions to the university? Informal. What's the address? Formal. The water evaporated as the temperature rose to a boiling point. Informal. The water got real hot and bubbly and just disappeared. Formal. The character in my narrative was having a nervous breakdown. Informal. 
I told the story about a dude that was totally nuts. Formal and informal language registers have no impact on how an ESL teacher chooses to develop and accommodate instructional material. True or false? The answer you should have selected is false. Formal and informal language registers have an impact on how an ESL teacher chooses to develop and accommodate instructional materials. If you selected true, please go back and review the content in this section. Component 1.B states, the ESL teacher knows the functions and registers of language, as in social versus academic language in English, and uses this knowledge to develop and modify instructional materials, deliver instruction, and promote ESL students' English language proficiency. Social and academic language. Notice in this concept map example, understanding the concept of a guess, clues, and proof, which are words students may develop as social language, will be the background needed for understanding words like hypothesis, estimate, inference, and judgment in academic content. Competency 2 goes into further detail on the theory behind how social language provides the foundational background knowledge for academic language. The student application is that by ensuring English learners understand how to use language functions and registers, students develop deeper connections between what they learn first, how to communicate informally to more formal communication, and when each one is appropriate. Basic interpersonal communication skills, or BIGS, are language skills needed in social situations. English learners employ BIGS on the playground, in the lunchroom, on the school bus, at parties, playing sports, or talking on the phone. The context is usually embedded in these social interactions. They occur in meaningful social settings, are not very cognitively demanding, and specialized language is not required. These language skills usually develop within six months to two years. Cognitive academic language proficiency, or CALP, refers to the English learner's capacity to use formal academic language. This includes listening, speaking, reading, and writing about subject area content material. CALP is a level of language learning that is essential for students to succeed in school. Students need time and support to become proficient in all academic areas. CALP usually takes from five to seven years on average to develop. Cognitive demand and level of context. The chart illustrates four quadrants where students may apply their knowledge of language. Information is either cognitively demanding or undemanding, and the context is either embedded or reduced. These factors have implications for instructional materials and delivery of instruction. Quadrant B includes demonstrations, audiovisual assisted lessons, science experiments, and social studies projects. This quadrant is the key instructional setting for growth in cognitive academic language proficiency, or CALP, through cognitively demanding material embedded in context. Cognitively undemanding tasks with context embedded, such as those in quadrant A, follow simple directions, face-to-face -face conversations, may be initially useful to scaffold the more cognitively demanding tasks. In quadrant C, telephone conversations, note on the refrigerator, texting, are all cognitively undemanding tasks with reduced context. These often happen naturally as a student develops basic interpersonal communication skills, or BICs. 
since tasks such as those listed in quadrant D, reading a textbook, new abstract concepts, lecture with few illustrations, math concepts and application are cognitively demanding, English learners would need the scaffolds and prompts that help to embed context so that the input is comprehensible. Vocabulary word categories. These are three organized tiers of words readers may encounter when reading or listening to new text. The words in each of these three categories may present challenges for the English learner depending on their level of proficiency. Tier one, Tier one words are everyday speech sounds, usually learned early, but not at the same rate by all learners. English learners may start developing dicks by learning these words, which are not considered challenging to those whose primary language is English. Examples include words such as dog, happy, or walk. Tier two. Tier two words are generally academic words based on grade level standards and often appear in written text rather than in speech. Examples may include words like benevolent and plotted. Becoming familiar with the meaning of these words will help English learners comprehend text in all context areas. Tier three. Tier three words are content specific words such as in science, the words breed and species. These words are considered key to developing cognitive academic language proficiency. So what's the student application? An ESL teacher can help English learners develop academic vocabulary through exposure to diverse texts, help translating from academic to social language and back, repeated encounters with academic words, emphasizing connections across authentic text. When delivering instruction, it's important to connect your understanding to providing accommodations and supports students may need as they navigate different functions of language and develop academic language. Accommodations and supports during the delivery of instruction may include scaffolds, use of visuals and gestures, speaking clearly and slowing down, paraphrasing, repeating key vocabulary in context, summarizing main points, limiting use of idioms, adapted text, graphic organizers, and strategies such as cognates and target vocabulary during reading. Students will need accommodations such as speaking clearly, repeating key vocabulary in context, and or paraphrasing in order to develop language beyond BICS. True or false? The answer you should have selected is true. If you did not select true, please review the previous section. Domain 1.C. The ESL teacher understands the interrelatedness of listening, speaking, reading, and writing, and uses this understanding to develop ESL students' English language proficiency. Interrelatedness of language domains. The four language skills, listening, speaking, reading, and writing, are all integrated and contribute to one's understanding of the world. Reading and listening are receptive language skills, Writing and speaking are productive language skills. Connection of oral skills, listening and speaking. As listening and speaking are interrelated, improving listening skills will have an impact on a student's ability to learn to speak a new language. Connection of academic skills, reading and writing. These academic skills draw upon shared knowledge bases and work together in helping students learn about a particular subject. Connection of receptive skills, listening and reading. These higher level language skills are critical to strong reading comprehension and its development. Language skills can be developed while listening during targeted instruction 
and discussions and can contribute to increased comprehension in its development. Connection of productive skills, speaking and writing. There is a high correlation between the level of speaking and the level of writing. The higher the level of speaking, the better the writing skill of the student. Interrelated connection and application to students' English language proficiency development. English learners require instructional activities and targeted accommodations designed to build on their prior knowledge in order to confidently practice using newly acquired English language concepts. English language proficiency standards. The following list includes essential practices for application of the ELPS. Integrate the skills. Use content-based instruction. Use task-based instruction. Domain 2 provides more clarification specifically on the ELPS and their instructional application. There is a high correlation between the level of speaking and the level of writing. The higher the level of writing, the better the writing skill of the student. True or false? You should have selected true. Please review the previous section if you selected false. What are the four language domains? The correct answer is listening, speaking, reading, and writing. One point D. The ESL teacher knows the structure of the English language, including word formation, grammar, vocabulary, and syntax and the patterns and conventions of written and spoken English and uses this knowledge to model and provide instruction to develop the foundation of English mechanics necessary to understand content-based instruction and accelerate learning of English in accordance with the English language proficiency standards. Helps. English language structures and conventions. The ESL teacher integrates these skills including word formation, grammar, vocabulary, and syntax within the text of instruction. Through content-based instruction, students are able to practice all the language skills in a highly integrated and communicative fashion, resulting in learning content. Let's take a look at definitions and examples for English language structures and conventions. Click on each word to read the definition and see an example. Word formation. Definition. Creation of a new word by either adding on morphemes or changing the way the word is used in context. Examples include prefixes, such as pre, anti, and non. Suffixes, such as us, astic, and etic. Conversion of words such as the word email, which is originally a noun, but often used as a verb, and compound words, such as crosswalk, moonlight, and butterfly. Grammar, definition, the whole system and structure of a language or of languages in general. Examples include syntax, as in the sentence, I went to the store. This is the correct syntax for the past tense of go. Morphology, like the word play, full, li, is playfully, it's the meaningful parts of words. Playfully has three morphemes. Punctuation, I went to the store. The exclamation point shows emotion. Semantics, he was the single man at the event. Single as in has no significant other or were there no other men at the event. Vocabulary. Definition. Body of words used in a particular language and used or understood by a group of people. Example. All the words that a toddler understands. Language used by doctors.
sentence patterns. Definition, patterns within a sentence made up of phrases and clauses determined by the presence and functions of nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Examples, patterns are most easily classified according to the type of verb used. Verb of being as the main verb in the sentence is, are, was, were, has, been, have, been, had, been. Linking verbs as the main verb in the sentence. Smell, taste, look, feel, seem, become, appear, grow. An action verb as the main verb in the sentence. See, jump, embrace, write, imagine, buy, plummet, think, etc. Parts of speech. Definition, a category to which a word is assigned in accordance with its syntactic functions. Example, noun, pronoun, adjective, determiner, verb, adverb, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. Punctuation, definition, marks used in writing to separate sentences and their elements and to clarify meaning. Examples, period, comma, parentheses, question mark, exclamation point, semicolon, colon, dash, hyphen, brackets, braces, apostrophe, quotation marks, and ellipsis. Discourse patterns, definition, the culture-bound logical arrangement of ideas in an expository text or of an oral presentation for informational purposes. Example, Standard English, which is linear, as in communication is direct and doesn't digress or go off topic. Romance languages, such as Spanish, French, or Italian. The discourse often digresses, for instance, may start with the main point, but normally introduces extraneous details. From the perspective of the language speaker, these are viewed as adding to the richness of the communication. Parts of speech. Words in the English language can be divided into nine parts of speech. These are nouns, verbs, pronouns, adjectives, adverbs, articles, conjunctions, prepositions, and interjections. A noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. Most languages have nouns or a similar concept. Examples of nouns include woman, United States, cookie, and freedom. There are different types of noun classes in English, which we will also examine in this section. A verb is an action word. In English, verbs follow the noun. Examples of verbs include run, be, feel, think. There are different types of verbs depending on how they are used in a sentence and verb tenses, so be ready for an overview of those as well. A pronoun replaces a noun in a sentence, although there must be noun-pronoun agreement, such as Veronica ate a cookie today because she was hungry. Veronica is female, so the pronoun she replaced her name in the second part of the sentence. Other examples of pronouns include I, me, we, you, she, and he. The different types of pronouns will also be explained in this video. An adjective describes a noun or a pronoun. They typically come before the noun. Examples of adjectives include beautiful, seven, courageous. An adverb modifies the adjective, verb, or adverb, and can come before or after the verb. Examples of adverbs include enthusiastically, extremely, tomorrow. Although adjectives and adverbs also have many types depending on how they're used in a sentence, we will not cover them in this basic grammar overview. An article is used to modify a noun. It's important to note that not all languages have these. Examples of articles include the, a, an. A conjunction is a word that joins two clauses. Coordinating conjunctions are the ones typically learned first. These include what English teachers like to call fanboys 
for and nor, but for yet so. The other two types of conjunctions, subordinating and correlative, will be explained shortly in this video. A preposition shows the relationship between two words or phrases and comes before a noun or a noun phrase. These include words such as on, at, by, as far as, next to. And finally, an interjection shows emotion or excitement. There is no grammatical link to other parts of the sentence. Examples include, oh, oops, ah, phew, and hooray. Types of nouns. Nouns can be categorized as either common, as in girl, or proper, as in the city of Austin. Nouns can be singular, as in the word student, or plural, as in students. Nouns can also be singular possessive or plural possessive. The apostrophe S after the word student denotes singular possessive. Notice the apostrophe is after the S in words that already end in S. Two other noun categories are compound nouns, referring to compound words that are nouns, like toothpaste and collective nouns, denoting groups, like the word family. Nouns can be concrete, like a flag, or abstract, like the concept of democracy. Finally, nouns can also be classified as count or non-count. Non-count nouns include things such as liquids, like milk, a disease, like flu, or an abstract idea, like soccer. In order to count those nouns, you would need the context of count nouns, like a cup of milk. 300 cases of the flu, or seven soccer games. Cup, case, and game are all count nouns. Types of pronouns. Personal pronouns take the place of people or things, as in he, she, or it. Possessive pronouns are personal pronouns that also indicate possession as in my, ours, or yours. Subject pronouns perform the action in the sentence, as in the pronoun I, in the sentence I bake cookies. Object pronouns receive the action in the sentence, as in the pronoun him, in the sentence I bake cookies for him. A relative pronoun starts a clause, as in the sentence, this is my mom who bakes cookies who is the relative pronoun referring to my mom and starting the clause in the second part of the sentence. Other relative pronouns include that, which, whom, whose, when, and where. Reflexive pronouns are when the subject performs an action on itself. Examples include the pronouns myself, herself, and themselves. Indefinite pronouns don't reference a specific person or thing. Examples include the pronouns someone, anyone, and everyone. Verb tenses. Verb tenses have three general categories, past, present, and future. The past is used to describe things that have already happened, earlier in the day, yesterday, last week, or a few years ago. The present tense is used to describe things that are happening right now or things that are continuous. The future tense describe things that have not yet happened, as in later, tomorrow, next week, next year, several years from now. The following table illustrates the proper use of verb tenses. Simple past, I walked to school. Progressive past, I was walking to school. Perfect past. I had walked to school. Perfect progressive past. I had been walking to school. Simple present. I walk to school. Progressive present. I am walking to school. Perfect present. I have walked to school. Perfect progressive. I have been walking to school. Simple future. I will walk to school. Progressive future. I will be walking to school. Perfect future. I will have walked to school. Perfect progressive future. 
I will have been walking to school. Types of verbs. Verbs can also be categorized by their function in the sentence. An auxiliary or helping verb helps the main verb. Examples include am, is, was, were, be, being, been. As in the helping verb am in the sentence, I am having a cookie. A modal verb helps when speaking about ability or making requests and offers. The verbs can, could, may, might, must, shall are all modal. As in the sentence, you can eat one more cookie. Can is the modal verb. A linking verb connects the subject with a word that gives information about the subject. An example would be the verb felt in the sentence, she felt hungry. A stative verb expresses a state rather than an action. Examples include the verbs like, seem, prefer, understand, as in the sentence, you seem hungry. Seem is the stative verb. Types of conjunctions. There are three types of conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions, join ideas in a sentence, remember the fanboys examples from the parts of speech overview, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so, and is the coordinating conjunction in the sentence, I love listening to music and running. Subordinating conjunctions connects an independent clause to a dependent clause. Examples include the words after, although, as, and if. If is the subordinating conjunction in the sentence, if you leave now, you'll miss the best part. Correlative conjunctions. Correlative conjunctions work together to relate one element in the sentence to the other. Examples include the words either, or, both, and. Either and or are the correlative conjunctions in the sentence, I either want the blue shirt or the gray one. Notice how conjunctions relate to compound sentences, complex sentences, and compound complex sentences. Common grammatical errors. All students, including English learners, will make grammatical errors as a natural part of the learning process. This chart lists a few common errors, sentence examples, a possible explanation for the error, and the corrected sentence. Error, choosing the wrong verb tense. Example, I have been to California last summer. Explanation, when referring to something that happened at a specific moment in the past, use the past simple, not the present perfect tense. Correction. I went to California last summer. Error. Using the wrong preposition. Example. The ball rolled in the goal. Explanation. Prepositions can be confusing when learning English grammar, as there are rarely clear-cut rules. Correction. The ball rolled into the goal. Error. Omitting articles. Example. I bought new shirt yesterday. Explanation. Recall that articles do not exist in all languages, so some English learners may often overlook them. Correction. I bought a new shirt yesterday. Error. Subject verb agreement. Example. The people is kind here. Explanation. Some subject verb agreement errors may result from English learners' natural referencing of their primary language. Correction, the people are kind here. Student application. What can ESL teachers do? By modeling and providing instruction to develop the foundation of English mechanics, ESL teachers can help English learners understand content-based instruction. Teachers can provide appropriate feedback embed grammar into authentic instruction, 
use sentences from content-based texts and student writing samples as models. Keep in mind, an English learner's ability to self-monitor for grammatical errors develops last. You'll learn more about this as it relates to Krashen's monitor hypothesis in the next section for competency two. ESL teachers will need to provide appropriate feedback. Component 4G in domain two will help you understand what exactly appropriate feedback consists of and how strategies such as restating with correct grammar while not overemphasizing the mistake is important. Grammar is part of the reading language arts content instruction in grades K through 12. However, English learners at the beginning or intermediate levels of listening, speaking, reading, or writing in grades three or higher may require accelerated learning of English grammar. Instruction must be focused, targeted, and systematic in accordance with the English Language Proficiency Standards, or ELPS. Domain two further elaborates on accelerating instruction for students with individual differences. The student writes, many of my classmates who love fruit hates tomatoes. The student's error is due to one, the student is using a singular verb form with a plural pronoun, or two, the student is using a reflexive pronoun instead of a personal pronoun. The correct answer is one, the student is using a singular verb form with a plural pronoun. Of my classmates who love fruit are interrupting words in the form of a prepositional phrase. This may have caused confusion. The plural indefinite pronoun many is the actual subject and requires the agreeing verb hate. The sentence should read, many of my classmates who love fruit hate tomatoes. It is now time to exit this module and move to the next module.